Examples of transactions portrayed in this video cover various periods throughout the month. Monies received into your trust account should be receipted as soon as you are aware of the transaction, i.e. you see the transaction on your bank statement. The dummy bank statement used in this video is a sample only. It is used to explain the functions of the program and does not relate to any bank or account held by REI Master. We're going to look at receipting and balancing or reconciling in this video. First thing of course is to do a receipt and it's as easy as selecting the receipts icon at the top here to bring up a list of tenants on behalf of who we're going to do a receipt. You can see at the top left here that you can receipt funds received from other parties but by default of course the list will appear in tenant order they're the ones you're mostly going to receive funds from. Now how do I know which tenant I can receipt monies against? Well down the bottom here I've got a dummy bank statement that I've prepared and I've got this listed here in older transactions at the bottom, newer transactions towards the top here. So I'm looking here on the 7th of September Mr. Holly, one of our tenants here, deposited $1,000 into our account. If I go back into REI Master, I'm going to pick up Mr. Holly here as one of our tenants, and I can either highlight and hit select here, or I can double click with the mouse, and that will bring up the receipt screen for us here. So this is a receipt we're going to do for Mr. Holly, lives at number 7 Penny Lane, his weekly rent $500. The date that shows here, of course, is just defaulting to today's date, as we can see down the bottom right-hand corner. So I do need to change this to reflect the deposit date of when Mr. Holly put the monies into our account. So I go back into the statement here. 7th September was when he actually deposited the funds into our account. I change that there to be the 7th. The receipt number is going to be automatically generated, and it clearly identifies here then who we're receiving these monies from. Now that $1,000 is rent money of course, so from our drop down list here we're going to select rent as how we're going to receive these funds. You can see other options for things that can be receipted against the tenant in the list here. If I click on the rent option there, I now have a little info, bit of information to fill in. We can identify here that the tenant pays $500 a week, currently paid up to the 14th of the 9th. No rent credit, no rebate showing there. So the amount to be paid and again, we just drop back to our bank statement here, $1,000. So that is what we're going to insert in this field just here. If I use the tab key on my keyboard, just to tab away from that field, the system has now acknowledged that that $1,000 is worth a rent payment from the 15th of the 9th through to the 28th of the 9th. And in our case, $500 a week. $1,000 being paid, that is two weeks worth of rent that we can see as the paid due dates there. Save your rent to the day option. We have to identify the payment method. This tenant here has the payment method defaulted to direct credit, i.e. a transfer of money directly into our trust account. So we can save on that there now. And here we are just confirming the direct credit details, i.e. the date of deposit, the payee details and the amount. I go back to my statement here, we've got the date of deposit, the payee details and the amount and we can confirm that they are all correct. Save on that there and we're asked then if we wish to print a copy of the receipt. Just say yes and we'll bring a copy of that up on the screen. So the receipt here of course, trust account receipt, disclaimer and act legislation there, business information and we now have the same details on the body of the receipt here as we calculated when creating it. Received from Mr. Holly, in, in, who occupies Seven Penny Lane, on behalf of Mr. Richards, who owns the property there. And our payment summary over on the right hand side here tells us that $1,000 is the direct credit receipt and the total, of course. Top half here is your original. If I scroll down, the bottom half of the page there is a duplicate copy. For you to print out, one for your tenant, one for your own business records. I'll close the screen there. If I just drop back to have a look at my statement of course, I have two other deposits there which I can receipt against. Again this one here on the 8th of September, Mr Moon has deposited $250 into our account. So I go back into REI Master, Mr Moon here is the tenant that we're looking for. Again highlight and hit select and it brings up a copy of the receipt for us to complete. The date as we saw in the, ten, in the statement previously, the 8th of the month 
and again we are receiving rent against this tenant here. So from the drop down list we select the rent option and the amount to be paid, quick look again, $250 that Mr Moon has dropped into our account. If I have a look here in the card it shows that this tenant should be paying $500 a week but he's only deposited $250. If I type the $250 in there tab with my tab key there and what it shows me then that this rent monies or this monies here being deposited is rent from the 10th through to the 12th with this little portion of a rent credit. So the $250 has been calculated at three days worth of rent with approximately half a day's worth uh, available here as a rent credit. I can save on that there now. Again with this one here nominate my payment method because this one hasn't been defaulted tick the direct credit box and what we're doing is confirming of course the direct credit details the date the payee details and the amount again if we look at the statement very clearly the 8th of September Mr Moon and a $250 deposit save on that save your receipt and obviously print out a copy as necessary say yes to that one and again similar details we now are showing here our rent period that's been paid for with the $250 that we can see there. The last deposit on our statement here, Mr Kerbishley who's deposited $750 into our account on the 9th of September. Mr Kerbishley here, select him. 9th of September is our deposit date and again under the drop down list here we're selecting rent as an item to receipt against. Again, this tenant pays $500 a week, paid up to the 11th. The amount, of course, as we could see, was $750. And by using the tab key here, it then gives me an indication that that $750 is worth for the period 12th through to the 21st, and again, a small portion of a rent credit. So effectively, at $500 a week, this tenant has paid a week and a half's worth of rent, and the system here has calculated those dates for you. Save on that, tick your payment method accordingly, direct credit in our case, and again we're confirming the direct credit details. Deposited on the 9th by Mr Kerbishley, $750. Save on that there, save on there, and obviously print a copy of the receipt as necessary. Receipt there with our rent portion showing from the 12th through to the 21st of the 9th, and a small rent credit, direct deposit of $750. So that's three separate receipts that we've done for rent based on what we can see here on our bank statement. Our next step is to look at the reconciliation process. And if I go to the reconcile button at the top right here, we can see in our reconciliation screen a number of transactions that are showing. In particular, we're looking at the bottom three transactions that we see there are the amounts of rent that we saw on our statement that we've just receipted. Our next step of course in looking at our bank statement is to just do the reconciliation of those deposits and any other transactions that have occurred on the statement around that period. So what I'm going to look at here is we're actually going to go down to the, towards the bottom of the statement here and we're looking here at this figure $1140 is the balance of monies in the account after our end of month disbursement had been paid out. And if I go into my REI master, this is the figure here that I currently have as my statement balance. I have it reconciled to that last day of the month and I'm in a balance position here. What I'm going to do now is acknowledge the transactions that have occurred since that particular date. I bring us up to speed here based on what we can see on the statement here. Our first transaction or the first thing that occurred after that end of month disbursement was Mr McCartney's cheque here being presented and obviously then debited from our account. So the amount of $222.50 was debited via the cheque that Mr McCartney presented and that then reduced our statement balance down to $917.50. If I go into my REI master here, I see here a cheque that had been acknowledged as part of the end of month procedure to Mr McCartney for the $222.50. And by ticking the box there, you can see then that it's unbalanced our accounts here. What we need to do, of course, is adjust the statement balance 
to acknowledge that that money has now left the account. I highlight that, just check to see what that amount is of course, back on our statement there, $917.50 is what the new balance is of course. Type in my $917.50, tab across there and you can see by that new figure being entered in here, we've now put ourselves back into balance and we should adjust our reconciled date to the date of when that cheque was presented. I go back to the statement here, 7th of September is our new reconciled date with that amount of 917.50. Change that there to the 9th, sorry the 7th, Oops, 7th of September of course. So we now got our reconciliation showing through to there. We now need to look at the next uh, transaction that occurs on our statement and they are in effect the three receipts that we did, the deposit here from Mr Holly, Mr Moon and Mr Kerbishley. And you can see after each of those deposits of monies that the statement balance has changed again, in our case increasing from the deposits that were made. I can if I wish to then go back into RER Master. Those are the three receipts that relate to the transactions or the deposits on my statement and by ticking those three again I'm put out of balance here by the total of what I've ticked or reconciled and our new statement balance of course back to the statement here after those three transactions have been reconciled or ticked our new statement balance $2,917.50 go up here change our statement balance and again if I tab with my tab key on the keyboard to hold that figure there I go back into a balanced position and again I should change my reconciled date here to reflect the date of the last transactions that I've ticked. Again if I go back to the statement the date there is the 9th that matches that statement uh, figure on our statement here the last one on our statement that we'll reconcile to uh, in this particular exercise on the 13th of September here a cheque to ABC Electrical has been presented for $110 and again our statement balance of course has changed due to that monies being debited from the account. Looking in here we have a cheque to ABC Electrical for $110 that was created as part of our end of month procedure now presented by that particular company so ticking that there again we're out of balance and we obviously need to adjust our statement balance there and adjust our reconciled date as well. So our new statement balance $2,807.50. Tab across there, change our reconciled date to the 13th. We're back in balance and we're up to date as far as our reconciliation goes. So I just go back to the bank statement. I've only reconciled up to this particular transaction here and this particular amount of monies. We can see other transactions have occurred over the next few days of course and in particular if we go back to our REI Master we have this one here, a cheque that was acknowledged again at the end of the month. We're in a balanced position here and this one has remained unticked because we've only reached a particular point on our statement to reconcile to. As we go further through identify the further deposits and the debits that appear on here. We are keeping ourselves up to date in a current balance position. In this video we've looked at the receipting side of things. We've then looked at the balancing or reconciling.